OKD working group meeting for March 15th and we are on the new um, time change so um, give everybody a few minutes to see if they all get in. In the chat is the um, MD agenda which I'm going to share on the screen for a minute and if anybody as any if I can figure out how to share a screen on this screen there we go up here too many systems there so if you could add your names in here I'd appreciate that and we do have a guest speaker today but I have pinged them um, in a couple of channels and have not gotten a response. So um, that is uh, the micro shift talk, um, which was rescheduled from two weeks ago for this week. But um, if Sally um, makes it, um, we'll... you're here. All right. So, there we go, Sally. Wonderful. Yes. Can I can hear everyone? Yep. Oh, man. Are we recording right now? Yes, we are. Hang on. <laughs> I'm very tired. I've been working on something like banging my head against the wall so you know like that how you just can't sleep until you get something working yeah yeah as long as it's not micro shift and no <laughs> okay all right good then, then we're good to go oh so, um, actually yeah I don't have it running but I do have a demo where I show it running so I'm just gonna run through some slides and um, talk about it okay so um if everybody's okay with that um, I'd like to have Sally go first so that we can get the get the presentation on MicroShift out of the way. And Sally, how long do you think you'll need for this? Oh, I don't, I'm gonna probably, I don't know, 15 minutes, minutes. Okay, take that, um, if everybody's okay with that. While you're listening to her, make sure you add your name to the HackMD, and in the HackMD are the links to all of the things that she's showing off. So um, check out the HackMD. So Sally, I'm gonna let you take it away. And, um, all right share your screen and we'll hear everything wonderful about MicroShift. It's been a while since I've shared screen with BlueJeans, so. Yeah. So I have one tab. Can BlueJeans share one tab? Yep. All right. Oh yeah, Chrome tab I see now. Here we go. And I am not muted. Nope, we can hear you loud and clear. And where are my slides now? Can I not see my slides? I, I, I can see them. We can you see can your see them. It's on so the, link, gonna... the link slide. I cannot see my slides. So that's going to be a problem. So let me stop sharing and put them in presenter mode, right? Is that what I have to do? Oh wait, they were there. They were there. Okay, hold on. Yeah. It, it there's a little lag sometimes. All right, let me get back to the first one. And I think I think I'm good now. Hold on. Okay, now we don't see your screens right now, so. Yep, 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 yep. Gotcha. Okay. Now we're all together. You good? It's loading, and now we see it. Thank you. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I am not ready yet. There we go. All right, so MicroShift, I don't know if anyone has heard of MicroShift. Um, I don't know how many people are in this meeting, but I'm going to skip down to the slide where it says what MicroShift is, but basically, it's to manage workloads on the disconnected far edge. I'll come back to these, don't worry. But yeah. MicroShift, it's an explorative project created by the edge computing team and the office of the CTO. So the emerging tech edge computing team. Um, and what it does, what you'll all be interested to know is it repackages the OpenShift core components or actually the OKD core components into a single binary. So that is what MicroShift is, but I'll go back up and start my spiel now. <laughs> so um, edge computing, 
um, what is Microsoft, show you the pieces. Uh, there's a few different deployment models. And the one that I think you all will be interested in to try will be the Microsoft AIO or um, all-in-one. So edge computing, uh, think like 5G, IoT, um, delivery drones, satellites, smart cars. Um, they're micro data centers, um, embedded systems, and like field devices. So things running um, with sketchy internet in the middle of an oil rig or something, um, a ship, a satellite. That's where the Microsoft was designed to run. So these field deployed devices, you know, um, pies, things that look like this, you got it. So the edge computing, it can bring the processing and the storage closer to the user. Um, so, like, you can run AI algorithms or in a in a smart car, um, or monitoring the oil and the gas, like out where it's being um, collected. Uh, you know, uh, running a program on a satellite. So that's that's they're not in a in a regular, highly available, you know, six node cluster. Um, like these uh, edge computing is, you know, for um, devices that can't run OpenShift or Kubernetes, basically. But you still uh, many times would love to have the um, the experience of like a cloud native Kubernetes deployments, all of the things that you're used to, um, you know, maybe these maybe the the programs might run in the in the edge device and also in a cluster it'd be nice that if you wouldn't if you didn't have to you know re reconfigure or rewrite the program so um that's the the problem that microsoft has been designed to solve um also like how to manage update transfer data to and from the remote edge um and Again, still use that tried and true, the familiar cloud native deployment patterns that you have in uh, Kubernetes. So these devices are low resource, they're disconnected. Um, the app, you might need the application and, and the workload management separate from the operating system, as opposed to how we run OKD and OpenShift where uh, everything is you know, a, a bundle. Um, or you might you might run it in like an RPM OS tree operating system, but not something that can run OpenShift. Not even so. Um, a Microsoft can be deployed as an RPM embedded in in an uh, like Edge um, rel for Edge, which is RPM OS tree based. Um, so yeah, so the problem, so the world is being instrumented. That's basically like the era that we're in. And we haven't quite figured out how to use the data. Um, we can't even imagine like what benefits might be waiting for us when we when we can, you know, harness and and use the data, like things like health and an environment and um, you know business opportunities. Uh, again, autonomous cars, space travel. I don't know. Um, so that's nobody's. So this this is the the problem space, the era that we're in. Edge computing is is um, becoming more and more real and important and critical. So at Microsoft, it gives the best of both worlds. Um, again, in device management. To manage the operating system, like I'll show you, um, Microsoft can be managed with System D, um, and also those Kubernetes cloud native. So again, uh, OpenShift, Kubernetes, OKD, those are like the highly available, stable data centers. And then 
you've got the other end where you're just maybe running a single Podman container on a on a tiny device, that would just be like Podman on RHEL for Edge. But Microshift is somewhere in between um, where you might want to run a deployment, um, some services, uh, but you don't have enough resources for to go all the way over to the right. So, yep, again, what it does is brings brings OpenShift and back to a monolith, although it's not a very it's it's a very tiny monolith, but it, it packages everything together. So let me break that down and show you. Um, it provides an all or nothing start and stop. Um, system D can wrap a podman command, which I'll show you. Um, and it and it starts and stops within a few seconds. You can keep a podman volume around to keep your the the state of everything so it can you know we start right back up where you left off and um let's see what what is the slides trying to show <laughs> oh yeah okay so an open shift you've got your operators and everything is highly available and fully managed uh that's what you lose with microshift but it's it's a trade-off for being able to run it in these edge devices. Make sure I didn't forget anything. Yeah, OpenShift is meant you know to scale, and Microshift is meant to not scale. <laughs> um, so here here's the architecture. This is what's kind of interesting. So in the Microshift binary, we have put the etcd cube api uh, controller manager the openshift api which makes it you know a step up not really step up it's different than like a kind or a mini cube because um, you can really still use those openshift uh, resources like scc's um, routes so yeah, in the kubelet, all of these things are are just um, embedded controllers. And then the Microshift designers have also um, added a few OpenShift specific uh, components like the service CA pod um, and the OpenShift router. So things that that you know very opinionated, they felt that um, developers would want they they also put in put in there um yeah uh again it, it, microsoft is is usually meant to run with podman so you pass a podman volume and that's what um holds your state and also it runs uh in in concert with cryo on a host um, later, I will show you that Microsoft AIO, it actually even embeds Cryo. So you don't even need to have Cryo installed on your host to run it. Um, but for production, that, that wouldn't be um, anything near like production. Or if you were going to run Microsoft in production, you'd want Cryo on the host as a systemd service and then Microsoft on the host as another systemd service. And here's where OKD comes in. So um, Microsoft it it references the the digests and um, uh, it, it references the digests of these um, core components and then also references the 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 manifest and the digests of these extra um, components. So these I, I think we call like the core controllers and these are the the add-on components, but they're they're added on by default. Um, they are yeah, the vendor, the the actual code is vendored in from a specific OKD release, and then the um, manifests are are added um, and referenced from a specific OKD release. I think. Yep. So a host machine that runs Cryo and Podman is all that's required. So again, here's a little flowchart that that decides for you whether you want to run rel for edge with a podman container uh rel for edge with microshift or over to the openshift side so you can see there are 
and I can share these slides, but it's pretty interesting to, to look at, at, at which is meant for where. So the, there, are, there are different deployment metal, models for Microsoft. Again, um, with an RPM OS tree like Ralph for Edge, you might just um, embed the RPM in the operating system and, and run it like that. Or you can run Podman on, on any operating system that can run Podman with systemd. Um, yeah, so with systemd and Podman, what's interesting is you, um, you have start, stop, and restart very, very easy. But also Podman has an auto update feature. So in, in the Podman command, which I'll, I'll show you in a bit, uh, you can set auto update equals registry, and then um, whenever there is a new image digest in the registry, uh, it will automatically kick off a new um, Microsoft pod, and, and that's how you can uh, up. That's it's very easy to update or roll back. Uh, we won't watch this now, but I will. I do have a link for it later. Can you guys hear that, by the way? I'm just wondering. No? Oh, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, OK. Um, we can hear you. I'm not sure. Yeah, I didn't. If we could hear I anything else. That. Yeah, I'll, I might, I'll show a few minutes of a demo at the end. Um, but here. This is what's very interesting for all of us, um, us developers. Microsoft all in one. It's a super convenient way to test, say, an, an Overshift deployment that you might be developing. Um, it's just a really quick and easy way to get up and running with a with a cube environment. Um, yeah, it can run anywhere. And some people have started to use it in the CI pipeline because uh, it is, you know, so resource not intensive. <laughs> How do, what's the opposite of resource intensive? I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is my side campaign um, to, to spread the word about Microsoft AIO. Um, oh, okay, that's it. So these, again, I'm gonna share these slides with you. Um, I, I really recommend that you um, check out each of these links if you're interested. Uh, but especially if you didn't see this, oh, sorry. If you didn't see the AI at the edge with Microsoft um, DevConf recording, it's right here. It's very good. But this is this is an AIO dem demo that I put together that I will share. Um, let me see. See if we can get your if it, if there's talking in it, if that'll be probably the the test. Yeah, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is stop sharing here and just share a, a new tab. So, because I have the other tab open. That. Well, we can help you get the word out about this. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, it's six minutes long. Like, do you want to watch the whole thing, or should I just go to the end where I show my terminal? I think. I think I'll go to the. Yeah. <laughs> it was at about 4.30, so I can stop it and kind of explain what's going on, yeah. Actually, I will show that. Let me just show you the Podman container. Hold on. No. Is that it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you guys, oh, let me full screen. Okay, you can see, so this would be what is in, um, the systemd unit file and I, I can actually pull that up too after I, I show this. Um, but um, this is basically what you would do. So the port forward of 6443 is just so that you can you can access your cluster um, from from your local host because Otherwise, it's only living inside of a container because Microsoft is running inside of a container. So if you if you port forward 6443, then you know localhost inside the container is the same thing as localhost 
443 outside the container and you can just run your OC or kubectl commands against the cluster running containerized, if that makes sense. Um, for the AIO, you definitely have to run privileged and um, you might have to turn off SC Linux. So that's why AIO is not meant for production, but it is meant for developers um, who don't really care about SC Linux running on their local system. Maybe you do, but I usually turn it off. Um, this, this again, there's a link to it and you can watch the whole thing. It's, it's, it's six minutes, but I will show you just Microsoft running. And can, first of all, can you all see that okay? Or is it way too small? No, I can see it with my old eyes. So okay, it, perfect. All right. Okay. All right. So, so you can start Microsoft with the Podman run command or wrap that Podman run command in a systemd service. That's where we're starting. And I'm going to keep pausing. Okay, so I'm going to copy the systemd unit file from Microsoft repo. So it's just GitHub, you know, slash Red Hat ET Microsoft. There it is. You, you can find it in the repo. I'm just copying that to my local system. And that's it. I haven't, you know, I don't have anything cloned. I have nothing. I'm just copying the unit file to my local system. And now I'm just going to start the service. And you can see that I have, I had a local registry running. So just ignore this registry container. Um, but you can see that Microsoft AIO, this, this registry can has nothing to do with Microsoft, but you can see I have AIO running. So let's see what it does. And I have a Podman volume that's saving the state. And there's the Podman volume if you want to look at all your stuff on your local system. Okay, so now here I'm going to exec into that Microsoft container. And let's see what's in there. Inside the container, I'm root. <laughs> And what's very convenient about Microsoft AIO is that um, baked into the image, the Microsoft AIO image, is OC and QCTL. So you don't you don't need to have OC on your system, you don't need to have cryo on your system. It's just all in one. And the cube config inside the container lives here. This is at the mount point also um, for the Podman volume. But you can go back and watch this demo because it just it shows you everything. All right, so I you can see it was only 10 seconds. I keep stopping it, but so far 10 seconds and things are already coming up. And I didn't. This was starting from scratch. And you can see already under one minute, uh, you've got the um, the embedded components such as Cube API, OpenShift API, etcd. Those are all just embedded in the binary so you're not going to see them separate like when you when you do oc get pods they're not separate pods they're part of the microshift binary so what you do see is um, the ingress those add-on components the OpenShift service ca um, host path we, we just um, set up host path provisioning um, there are other options but yeah so now you can see one minute it's all ready now i'm still inside the container and uh, I, there's also cryctl inside the container. So I just did a quick, you know, let's see what what um, containers are running. And so here, again, it's it's what it's um, it uses flannel for networking, but these are all the the containers, the underlying of the pods. Okay, so now I'm showing you I'm outside the container, and this is how you connect to the cluster outside the container. You can see I'm no longer root, I'm just myself. So here, you cop this is a podman command to copy from the Microsoft container that cube config, and I copy it to my local host right there. And that's why you port forward 6443, um, because now it's just, you know, it doesn't know that you're not inside the container. And you, you do have to, you know, fix the permissions, but now you just, it's basically, you have a cube config and you're accessing a cluster. So you can see that. So I just wanted to prove that you can um, create new, you can create deployments. Um, you can see my deployments running. I can scale it. Um, now, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. So now I'm, I'm stopping the service. 
and you can see that there's no there's no containers like again this is i just left that there on an accident but the microsoft aio container is gone and now i'm going to start it back up and there's all my pods still running oh and and uh i wanted to show that the test the test deployment you know i started and stopped it but as soon as i restarted it again it just picks up from the podman volume where i left off and to clean it up so if you're if you are running in a system service you you do need to stop the service that's what this is showing rather than just um, stopping the container because it will just keep restarting because that's what a service does is that it i believe so yes so to clean up um fully you can remove the volume and then you know your state won't be there the next time you start so that's it it's just super convenient um try it out it it, it literally takes two minutes to run and um let the team the ai that the edge team know what you think because um it's still like very new and we're still gathering i uh, so i can tell you here i'll stop i'll stop sharing now so um where do you want us to give you feedback where's where's the place to get best yes. place to feedback so um let me go back to actually the slides um you know what no i'm gonna go so there's a slack channel is and i don't know if that's on there so let me let me see if it is <laughs> is the slack channel on there uh there's a blog oh okay i know here 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 microsoft.io the docs um if you go to the community page microsoft.io yep 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 microsoft.io um where's the community oh community here you go we're, so we're microsoft... not see, we're not seeing you navigate over there but I, i'm sure we can oh you're not uh why not you're because you're only sharing your chrome tab and the one chrome tab i think i thought that chrome tab was the same thing hold on mm. there it's in the someone's posted the link in the chat so i think we're good um cool. there there are a couple of questions um that awesome. i thought thought um, um and but before i answer the question i just want to say that i was working on microsoft for a few months um my i i have moved on to other projects but the the core edge team is still very much involved with microsoft um that would be miguel and ricky and um you can find them on the slack channel very easily okay and, questions and they are both talking at commons in at kubecon for me on microsoft um to give awesome. the time as well yep. so we'll get the word out there so there's a couple of questions neil was asking um if it's possible to have the OpenShift web console on a MicroShift deployment, particularly the MicroShift AIO, is is it there or it, it doesn't? Or is it too much? Was it one of not non-core things? Sorry, I didn't. Can you can you just say that that um, question one more time? Because I can't see the chat for some reason. Yes. Yeah, so if you stop sharing your your screen, then <laughs> then it'll let you see the chat. So <laughs> it's life life and <laughs> so um it basically uh, the, we have the OpenShift web console, and they're wondering about um, sneaking that into the AIO version of MicroShift. And Leroy is asking, yeah. are there add-on component images baked into the bi bin binary too, or did it pull them at runtime? There's a couple of questions. So those, in there. Yeah, those add-on components are the ones that um, that the team thought they're not really add-on because they're they're by default. But um, you can add on. Uh, you can experiment and add on other things okay. we the 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 philosophy is to keep it as small of a footprint as small as possible so yeah. um unless there's a really good reason they're not gonna add it on by default um, well, let's think, see what other questions so so sally i think um i, I think we we have um, a lot of good information here we also have a few other things. Vadim, is there anything that we should be asking that we're not that you want to make sure? Um, I wanted to. You can hear me, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You can. Right? Great. Um, 
a lot of people have been asking, does OpenShift in any form work on Raspberry Pi 4 in particular? Yeah. If Absolutely. it's MicroShift, then perfect. Yes, Great. MicroShift runs on Pi 4. There's a, there's a very big group of, um, there's a very good big group of people working on it. There's some really cool demos coming out on the Pi. Um, it's a it's a main yep and GPU um, enabled also. Very All right. Lovely. Another question Leroy has asked: do, do we pull images on on runtime or everything is included in those 160 megs? That's a really good question. So um, the references are included. The images are are not, but um, for fully disconnected, there is. Um, last I checked, they were we're just finishing it up. Um, how to um, the images come come tarred up, and all you do is like unpack them with a, a Podman um, command. It's, it's super cool. I, mm -hmm. I, if, if I knew right where it was, I would I would find it. But um, so it is possible. Sure. So to run completely there, is, there is a way to there is a way to mirror them or run them disconnected. Anyway. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's a, it's a super cool way though. I wish I could ex explain it. It's with it's with Podman. It's not like a mirroring of like OpenShift does. It's it's way like way better. Um, you can also, I suppose, save them as star files and then just Podman load them right Podman immediately. Load. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And those are those I think are included as like a separate RPM. So it doesn't it doesn't um, bloat the the actual image. But if you if you want wanted to run like that, you can include, you know, install that RPM, which is just the images. And and um, for those interested in Raspberry Pi, is that also under the Microshift.io um, website? Is there a link yep. somewhere there to the Raspberry group? I think um, there it's definitely included in the how tos. Let me just make let me see developers. Yeah, where is where is that conversation take place? Because I know that's the one that. Yep. Um, if you go on the Slack, so Microsoft has its own Slack uh, org, and it's it's, um, it's there in the docs. So if you go there, um, there's a whole channel for ARM support. Okay. And it's very active. And if it's not, if people aren't answering you, just just ping Ricky or Frank or Miguel, and they'll get right to you. Cool. Awesome. Well, this this is something that we've waited for a long time. Oh, so good. I hope I, I hope I did an all right overview, but definitely look at Ricky and Miguel's um, DevConf um, presentation because it's it's great. Yeah. Diana, and, I have a quick question if, uh, mm -hmm. if we still have time for that. Yep. Go yep. for it. Um, yeah. So this like this sounds pretty awesome, especially so with Fedora Core OS, we kind of we kind of float every everywhere from like single node podman to running okd on top mm -hmm. um but we have a lot of you know like you said this is a use case very much in between where people like some of the features of the kubernetes platform but they don't necessarily want or have the resources to install a full okd installation i think uh you know bringing this to the fedora core os community would be something that would really be popular Mm -hmm. um, my only question is, I know you mentioned it's experimental, which you yes. know a lot of these projects are. Uh, like for example, if Fedora Core OS typically is more of a set it and forget it type, so if they were to run, you know, the Microsoft uh, all in one configuration, we would want to give them some way to like automatically update it. So it's you know it, they don't just run it once and then it stays on that old um you yeah. know software forever right if microshift has uh either security updates or like feature fixes or bug fixes or something is there a way that you know of that is like a easy way to just keep things up to date just yeah. repulling the repulling the container or anything like that um so it, it's an, it's it's real it's um provided as an rpm so that's what fedora core os would consume right and um, but you would i think you would just yeah i think you would make your own fedora core os with microshift isn't that gotcha so when then, you say it's provided as an rpm is it like the systemd unit that's provided as an rpm that still pulls from a registry or is it like the microshift binary provided as an yeah. rpm too um so the microshift binary is provided as an rpm um 
Gotcha. And then you can run, you can run um, the, and, and that includes the unit file for Microshift. So you can run that just barely bare on your host, the Microshift, but you can also run the systemd service that wraps the podman command. Gotcha. But inside that podman container is still running, you're running systemd inside the container. So yep. inside the container, it's just the same as if you were running it on the host. So Perfect. you're running the Microshift service inside the container. Or with the RPM, you can just run run that without podman on the host. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I won't ask any more questions because we got to wrap up, but thank you so much for this. Yep. So all the unit files you'll find in the Microsoft repository under packaging system D, and then that kind of explains stuff too. All right. And I see that Jamie has, has joined us, um, our other co-chair. Um, and um, in, in the interest of time, Sally, thank you ever so much for this. And please thank the entire team for getting this work to Yay, you know, I will. place. It really is huge. Um, I think I've waited nine years for this, um, so this is yep. this is pretty pretty cool. Um, and um, I'll do whatever I can to help you build this community out. This is this is yeah, like it doesn't have a real um, place yet, so it just it's yeah. it's new and we don't know where it's going to end up. But yeah, I'm yeah. we're we're I'm having a conversation with Aaron Boyd about you know what the next step is too. Yep, so exactly. Yeah. I, I think it's going to incorporate a lot of enthusiastic OKD people. So um, Definitely. We're, we're pretty happy about this. So I'm going to go back to the regular agenda. Um, and the next thing on the regular agenda here, for those of you who are following it, um, is the OKD release updates. And Vadim and Christian are both here. So um, tell us about Dirty Pipe and anything else we need to worry about, Vadim. Sure. Um, a week ago, we released OKD 410. This was based which is roughly similar to the GA version of OCP. Um, there are still a few patches waiting to be merged. We've seen um, an, a problem with the cluster CD operator, which mistakenly marks nodes as um, a insufficient disk space, or rather disk speed. Uh, there are workarounds for all these. We haven't seen any catastrophic failures. Um, John Fortin has reported a problem with the uh, staff amount in the registry. We're still investigating what's up with that. Um, and this weekend, I'm going to release another percent version of the upgrades. Uh, the problem is that it contains um, a kernel update fix for the dirty pipe vulnerability, which allows uh, users to rewrite read-only files. Um, Apart from that, it also has a regression related to NFS, which is hugely popular. So uh, there is a workaround posted by uh, the Oracle Rise folks. We will uh, add this part of announcement that you need to make sure that your NFS won't break um, and read more details on the Bugzilla before the next release. And we'll include other fixes coming from Fedora um, another important so forth and release is that we have finally upgraded to Fedora 35 and we'll be following the Fedora Chorus table. Um, we also updated the system installer config maps to make sure that you can install Fort Sand with that. And uh, now we need to update our documentation to mention a new way to run single node clusters using system installer. This unfortunately has to be hosted on your site. We cannot use the hosted version of Assistant Installer on console.com, but uh, it's fairly simple, really. And we will also update the documentation to mention that the bare metal API is finally supported. Um, I haven't seen any reports that it's actually working, so if anyone has the luxury of um, Redfish, iDrag, and all things like that, and would like to test OKD, that would be. Uh, very, very appreciated. Um, I believe that's all we have for the actual release updates. We're also working on uh, CoreOS layering, which will simplify our builds and would enable people to um, layer their own configuration settings and uh, RPMs onto their custom disks uh, as if it was a standard build config. But 
all of that work is still highly experimental. We're waiting for a critical piece in MCO to land before we can start rolling this out. Um, yeah, I believe that's it. All right. I just to quickly add to that, maybe Dusty has some more info on that too. Um, the the CoreOS layering is planned for 4.11, so for the 4.10 timeframe that will land in at least not in the same version of KD uh, until then. Um, but yeah, I think that that's going to uh, bring with it a, a few big improvements both on the usability side as well as on the on our AI and testing side because we'll be uh, trying to to move an OKD end-to-end -end test uh, into Fedora Core OS, uh, essentially, to have uh, OKD end-to-end -end tested for each uh, Fedora Core OS change, which hopefully we currently only do this discreetly and we don't have continuous testing really um, for that. So hopefully that'll improve um, our, yeah, just how we test things uh, a lot and, uh, Hopefully, we can avoid breakages uh, to updates uh, with that in the future. Oh, oh yeah, right. my, my, my router has enough uh, antennae. It yeah, uh, real quick, uh, for the NFS issue that Vadim mentioned, uh, if, we, if I understand it correctly, it only happens for certain, um, like, NFS, like, server NAS products that exist. So I'm hoping that it, I don't think it is something that affects everybody who uses NFS. I think it's only if you happen to have one of these uh, QNAS um, or QNAP NAS devices, uh, then you would be affected. But hopefully not everybody who uses NFS would hit an issue. I mean, otherwise there's no way people are running the kernel, like a newer kernel and not complaining about this. All right. So I don't see Timothy here. Um, and the next thing up is usually the Fedora Core OS update. So maybe, um, Dusty, if there's anything, go for it. Yeah, I don't have anything uh, too specific other than obviously that new kernel is coming to stable. Um, and Vadim mentioned it earlier. Um, uh, we're going to start rebasing our next stream onto Fedora 36 here uh, in the next week or so. And that's. Um, coinciding with the Fedora 36 beta. So uh, you might be able to use that as an opportunity to get some early testing in on uh, the Fedora 36 bits. And um, so the next thing up, I don't, do I see Brian Innes on um, for doc updates? Brian is not able to, uh, to make it today. Okay. Uh, but I can jump in with a couple of the things uh, that we have from that. Um, so it, the code of conduct is now um, up uh, and congratulations and thanks to all the people that helped contributing towards uh, the code of conduct. And um, we're going to start filling in details um, for operator wants and wishes on Christian's original uh, issue. Uh, in the repo, which dates back, I think, to like January or February of last year or something like that. It's been around for, for a while. So the idea is that folks should start having conversations on that issue, within that issue, about your wants and needs and desires for operators uh, using the forthcoming operator catalog. Um, uh, for reworking the OKD-based repository, we're going to start just creating PRs. Uh, to align with uh, Vadim and other folks sort of signing off uh, on the proposed changes as we move to the new repo. Um, multiple people have been added as um, owners of the new OKD-project repo. Uh, so there's now probably, I think, a dozen people, Brian, myself, Bruce, uh, Diane. Um, so uh, the usual suspects are there. And um, we want to make this uh, accessible to folks and start moving there the, at the next docs meeting we're going to get very specific with our transition plan uh, to it. Um, another thing that came up is uh, uh, website styling. Uh, Brian is working with Brandon on improving the visibility and accessibility of the OKD website, the new OKD website, um, get the, getting the color scheme uh, together and properly tweaked. 
and then also, um, uh, basically, we're going to talk about um, Matrix and make a decision because folks are having a hard time registering in Matrix, so we may scra actually scrap the idea. Um, if anyone in this group has feedback on Matrix and has been able to successfully register and um, has found it useful and thinks OKD should be using it, um, please uh, uh, share with us uh, in the documentation group your experiences, because three people in the documentation group have had issues trying to register with Matrix. Um, have, and, so, yeah. Sorry, Jamie, quick, quick question. Have they yeah. uh, registered? with the Fedora Matrix instance, or which one? Because I I have multiple Matrix accounts, like with uh, the, what is it, Riot, or the, the original Matrix one, then there's one from Mozilla. Right, right. There's... So this is supposed to be a room hosted on the Fedora one. And so they're apparently, so Brian, for example, is getting, when he tries to use his Gmail account, your organization is not approved to use some sort of message along those lines. I wish Brian were here to provide more info, but um, maybe we need to clarify the instructions a little bit. Um, I don't know, we'll see, but if, if you want, we can have a side conversation about how to utilize that and um, and if, it's, if it is the, the best tool uh, for sort of group uh, communication, group chat and whatnot. I'll get back to you on uh on that because uh, for, for me it works and uh, I can even use my my Mozilla uh, matrix account to access the Fedora the rooms so I don't know okay uh, all right I'll, I'll let's see. figure out what's going on with that and that's it in terms of uh, communications you want, you want to walk through the docs. issues now yeah sure so let's go through issues real quick to see what is new and fun and exciting uh, the OVN Kubernetes bugs working with uh, external IPS. Um, I think there was a response on that. Right, so there was a, um, was there a Bugzilla filed for that? It doesn't look like, there's no response, so we don't know if, if there was for that. Uh, simple content access alert. Um, Vadim, you want to fill us in a little bit on that instead of, us sort of going bit by bit. On um, this simple contact access error, um, we're still discussing this. So there is a um, Relay feature, or rather OCB feature, to easily deliver subscriptions to Relay nodes. Uh, that's great and absolutely useless for OKD. Um, there is a setting how to disable it, but we're still discussing should we own the whole config map? What are the implications of us setting uh, this? So once we clear this with the uh, inside operator folks, uh, we can easily add this as a, as a config map during the next update. It would be automatically applied and the alert would be gone. Um, so it's fairly easy to fix. The problem is that we don't know all the consequences of this just yet. Uh, as for other discussions, I I can think of anything which is immediately raising as a problem we need to fix. There are quite a lot of problems which are shared with OCP, and these just need to be reported to Bookzilla. Okay. And speaking of discussions, so there is in the discussion section that conversation with John um, about the NFS um, and so there's a, an error, and we should probably mention this in the meeting because other folks might have this issue. So this is um, in discussion 1153. John interpreted the error as to mean an RBAC issue initially, but actually it's from the storage file system. It's, it's the NFS issue. Um, and this, um, it was causing uh, the builder to fail basically. Um, and so, Folks should check that out to get clarification that this has to do with the storage and not with um, the builder account, um, service account permissions. Uh, let's see, that's it for discussion items and issues. Um, so operator status, did we talk about that yet? 
do you want to? Do either of you want to provide an update if you haven't already? On we the we don't have anything, unfortunately. So the, okay. we have all the infrastructure in place. Now the hard part is to get a buy-in from the teams so that they would start deciding should their operator be in the community repo or should they move to OKD specific repo? Should it just be created in the OKD specific repo? Uh, since 410 has been released, they would have more time to actually get this done and we'll start pinging them. But at this point, there hasn't been anything actually happening apart from being enthusiastic that this whole repo just exists from, from the internal teams, basically. Excellent. Uh, I think we, we will see good. some movement on that uh, soon now that 4.10 is out. Uh, the, the stress level is, is a bit lower um, for everybody. So I think we'll, we'll, now we'll have better chances for the teams to look at, to look at uh, actually building for OKD. Is there any outreach, um, Vadim and Christian, that we should be doing uh, or that I should be doing? Uh, maybe. I'll, I'll revive that uh, internal chat we have with the uh, operator hub folks um, see that we can kind of get, when we're, get them to start the discussion with the, with the teams. If we could get something set up and then at KubeCon EU, I know both you and Vadim are going to be there and Daniel Messier will be there and maybe some of the other operators. Maybe we can just put our heads together and get a, um, a roadmap put together at that point, hopefully before May, but um, that's, that would be nice to move that forward as well it would be nice to be able to give users something that they can have a sense that other than this amorphous announcement that there's something that that you know yeah there's a plan moving forward yeah in some yeah. Yeah. uh okay and um christian did you want to touch briefly on uh the uh provider onboarding stuff yeah just very briefly uh, i thought it might be interesting um we have internally created documentation. Um, at first, it was just geared towards uh, our uh, developers within uh, within Red Hat, but we're going to open that up and it's uh, public now. I kind of an onboarding guide how to get new platforms uh, to run OpenShift, and that is not actually it is kind of geared towards the platform providers, so they can onboard OpenShift themselves and add support themselves without having to involve. Uh, Red Hat, um, at least at first, um, th there's kind of a tiered support model in, in the works, and um, that all of that applies to OKD as well, though. And we've had um, internally, we've had two folks uh, enable OpenShift or getting OpenShift to run on the Vulture cloud as well as on, I think, DigitalOcean, uh, kind of just following the, the steps there. Um, both of which are obviously aren't supported in any way, but um, just for folks interested in running uh, OKD uh, on, on infrastructure that isn't already supported officially, um, that is kind of the, the place to look at, at what, what to do and how to proceed there. Um, it'll, it'll kind of be geared towards OCP, uh, towards the providers themselves to, to then add official support um, along the way, but yeah, all of that applies to OKD as well on the technical level. So if you want to uh, kind of try to install OKD on another platform, um, that would be a repository where a lot of information lives. Yeah, and this, kind of used this actually connects to a conversation from last year about reaching out to different providers that aren't supported yet. OKD had sort of talked about like, hey, let's reach out to these folks and see if they would be willing to donate some resources to get things working on their um, platforms, this could be help OKD leveraging that basically, you know what I mean? To, to, we could leverage that to get, you know, some more platform supported for sure. Yeah, Diane looks like you're- Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I just had a, a quick question for two questions. What is this Vulture Cloud that you, you speak of? I haven't heard of it before. And can you put a link to that in? I haven't. I haven't seen them, and there's a bazillion clouds out there, so it's good to know a new a new ones there. Or, um, and I had also heard that Alibaba Cloud and um, Azure Stack um, were now 
documented in the um, OpenShift docs or Michael Burke, there was a little thread on that, Vadim, you are on. And yeah, thank you, that's how you spell Vulture, not the full way, B-U-L-T-R. Yeah, that was that was a new cloud for me as well. I, a colleague of mine did that in, in our hack week um, and yeah, he got it to run. Cool. Um, so uh, the other, uh, I'm just curious, the Alibaba and the other Azure Stack Hub, um, are those going to uh, magically appear in the OKD docs.io? Um, or is there something we have to reach out in the docs group with Michael Burke um, to make sure they show up? They should just magically appear. We uh, have a setting to remove rather override things for OKD. But everything else just comes straight from OCB Docs. Yeah. Do, do like we have uh, Fedora CoreOS images on both of those, on, on Alibaba and Azure Stack Hub? Or yes, we one? definitely have Alibaba. And last time I checked, there was an Azure Stack Hub images. I never, I don't have access to the accounts there, so I never check that OKD is actually installable, but I don't see a reason for this to for them to break. Just simple as yeah. that. Since we we use... have we have both the images. Unfortunately, we don't have access, at least for Alibaba. We have Azure access. I don't know about Azure Stack to be honest with you, but uh, we don't we don't have uh, community access right now for Alibaba. Um, so we're not uploading or testing every release. But yeah. that's that's kind of like a a a manpower problem and an access problem. Like, w with enough manpower, we probably talk to the right people to get proper access. Uh, but we just were spread a little thin. Okay. That, that's, we that's could good. use OpenShift CI to actually test this. Um, I'll try to do this next week, but nobody has requested Alibaba and uh, Azure Stack Hub to OKD specifically, so that's what we get for free. Okay, so if anyone's listening to this recording and they wanted either of those things, reach out and let us know. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to drop in the last 60 seconds is uh, over a year ago, we did uh, sort of a configuration and deployment summit for OKD where everybody walked through it. And I think at this juncture, I'm, you know, maybe some, the Vulture folks, the DigitalOcean folks, and maybe it's time to revisit that as, something to bring the OKD community together again, and then to expose these new docs. Um, if I can see a, ch a few thumbs up there in the chat. Um, if we could organize something for that, probably post KubeCon EU um, in June-ish, um, um, I think that would be a lovely time to, to do a push around that. Um, and again, um, that would be, I think, virtual, um, but a way to do that and then create Find the Panda logo, the latest one, and give away, you know, T-shirts and swag or something like that for people to do that. And you do it in conjunction with the docs um, groups push to get updated guides. So part of, you know, so I think it's, I think the timing is right now um, with these new docs being out there. So um, we can, Dusty, we can work with you to make sure that, you know, maybe June, July, um, time frame we have the images where we need them or at least access to them um, and that that I think would be a great way to um, come into the new year and the new releases yep like I said fortunately we already have the images available with every release that we do uh, mm -hmm. so it, it's all wiring after that point right <laughs> just yeah. wiring everything up so we, we can work on that um, but yeah cool and my last question for Vadim, and I haven't checked because I've been offline for three days. Um, did we, when, were you able to use the Twitter handle to do a, a quick announcement on the latest release? No, it's just like it's been a, a week already, so we'll probably go with the next. I definitely have the account of uh, the access, but just felt very wrong to post the release announcement a week after. Yep, no, you, your judgment is good. All right, final words, Jamie? Go forth and conquer. Live long and prosper? Oh, no, that's the other one. Anyway. <laughs> all, <laughs> yes. right. all right. Take care, guys. Thanks, everybody, yeah. for all your hard work. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.